Hey everyone, it's Chewburger84 back again. So uh, we did that video just before. Uh, the editing skills are not gonna be any better than they were uh, a few hours ago. However, there have been a couple of people that have DM'd me curious about, they've just unlocked their Fury team and they wanna know what sort of positioning that I've been using in raids and also in arena over the last month, obviously, because I've had him since the first time around at five star. And now obviously I've got him at six star. So let's break down the team one by one first. So there are six possibilities of who you can cycle through this team. So number one, obviously, is Nick Fury himself. So he has a lot of fantastic abilities. This is one that a lot of people don't realize is probably one of the better abilities in this team. So this ability is going to shoot uh, one person. It is going to chain to a second target when you have it up to level six. But why it's so fantastic is that when it crits, and it can crit on each of those targets, you are going to give energy to adjacent targets. Now that could be him, it could be a character to his left, or a character to his right. So where you position him is going to be very important, because that's where the energy is going to get fed to. Uh, Rally is obviously fantastic. Um, it's going to provide a very fantastic heal to all of the minions and himself. It is also going to give defense up to the entire squad. Now, any buffs that are on Fury at this point in time, that's going to be shared throughout the squad. So you, you want to hold this usually until he has a couple more buffs on him. And we'll talk about the best ways to get him buffed very, very shortly. Okay, <clears throat> let me just move this out of the way. It's possessed at the moment. All right, so... Then we go down to his reinforcements. Now with this, at level six, you're able to summon two shield allies, okay? Now they're gonna do 300% damage, which is fantastic. They are incredibly squishy. But when you have shield operative drop, it is going to give Nick Fury speed up. Now when you have shield security drop, it is going to give offense up. Now most of the time that you're using this ability, it does seem to drop one of each. And the T4 abilities here for the level seven do seem pretty good because obviously you can call down a third minion, which obviously increases the chance of you getting one of these buffs and also gives you something else for DPS potentially in the fight or to soak some damage. One of the easiest ways to get your shield security to taunt is to summon a minion because when that minion gets hit or even killed, that's gonna trigger your security. And that means that the rest of the next few hits are gonna be going through someone that's very, very likely to block. Now you can see here, my fury is tier 12. Okay, that I got that a few days ago and I have put the T4 ability on him. Now, it was the second one that I did, and I definitely do not regret it. So what the T4 adds is basically an additional 20 chance on his, on his turn, 20% chance to give himself speed up, as well as shield minion allies, and an extra 10% chance to throw an assist. So these assists, because the team is moving so fast under Fury, that he tends to go very, very often, and he calls those assists very, very often for the entire shield squad. Now, what you may not see here in the text, let's just scroll up a little bit, is that if it's a shield minion that gets the assist, they get offense up on the way in. So you'll find that a lot of the shield minions are gonna have offense up quite a lot. They're gonna crit quite a lot because of the assault passive. And adding that together, you're gonna to get energy from Fury, you're going to get crits, you're going to get offense up, and this, this call-in of extra characters is nothing short of fantastic. So uh, I would say this is probably one of the essentials. I know a lot, of the, a lot of the other content creators and people that got Fury the first time around definitely run with this particular T4. So Fury is the linchpin. He is what makes everything work with this team. The minions together are great, but under him, they are nothing short of unstoppable in the current meta, okay? We'll just go down in the order that I currently have them. So next I have the shield medic. Now I'm currently farming her up to tier 12. I'm gonna finish security next, but she is a very, very underrated character. So her Isa pistol is probably one of the things in this team that makes it very, very good for raids because not only is she able to heal a lot of damage, but she can prevent a lot of damage with her basic attack. Now, not only does she does this on her primary attacks, but when she does an assist or a counter, she also has the option to put offense down. And this seems to go off quite a bit, especially on the counters. It seems less when you're on the, on the sorry, on the assist it goes more, on the counters, it can be a little bit of a mixed bag. So not only do you give offense down for one to two turns, and the two turns comes up quite a lot, uh, I gotta admit. 
But also if it does crit, again, which is very likely because of Assault being on the team, you're gonna reduce that particular tune speed bar by negative 25%. Now on slower characters like Ronan, Hulk, Luke Cage, this can be multiple, multiple turns for your Fury team before they get to go. You probably saw this particular effect in action a lot in the video I posted a few hours ago. So I really, really love this ability. And I've been using Medic a lot more in a lot of different game modes, even occasionally in Arena now, for exactly that reason. Now, Emergency Treatment. In a Shield team, this is arguably one of the biggest heals in the game, if not the biggest heal in the game. Um, she feels so much more effective than Night Nurse on this team, uh, although Night Nurse is obviously much more flexible in so many other game modes. So when you do have a team full of Shield, as you can see here, not only are you going to get a 20% chance to revive, like most revive mechanics, it feels like that never works. If you do lose someone, there's a pretty good chance that they're not coming back. Now, they only come back with 10% health. So I found many times that I have had someone resurrect only to die pretty much straight away. Uh, so it's, yeah, I'd love if they were going to change that amount of health that they came back with to be significantly higher because it's only a 20% chance for it to trigger in the first place. To me, that feels a little bit low. Now, not only is she going to heal everyone for 1100 health, then it's going to be an extra 15% of her own health. However, if the people that she is healing are shield or fury, it's an additional 20%. It is a ludicrous amount of healing. And because it is only a five ability and you can park her next to fury that, so that she will get a lot of that energy very, very quickly, this heal is going to be going off quite a bit. Now, her T4 ability on the passive I have used. It was the third one that I used and was only very recently. And since then, I've found that my sustain has gone up an incredible amount. So what the passive normally does without T4 is that on her turn, there's a 50% chance to heal the most injured ally for 20% of this character's max health and give them two regens as well. Now, if that ally is Nick Fury or Shield Minion, then you're going to get an extra stack of regen. Now, what the T4 does is it only brings it up by 20%, which doesn't sound like much. But with how fast the Fury team is, if you average it out to one out of every two turns, this is going to proc. Not only are you going to have bonus heals flying off all the time, but you're also throwing around regen. Now, you may remember when I was talking about Fury, I mentioned that when he has buffs on him, he can share those with the rest of the shield squad. So if he gets the regens on him, and because of a weird taunt mechanic, that actually happens quite a bit, then you're going to find that you're going to be able to share that regen with his rally ability very, very frequently. So Shield Medic is awesome. Like She is essential for raids, and I'll show you the positioning very soon. And I'm finding more and more that she does have some places in Arena. It just depends on the matchup, and there's a lot of flexibility between her uh, Trooper and also uh, Shield Operative. So Shield Security, um, he's probably one of my favorite tanks because he's so ridiculously effective. So first things first, he has Stun Baton, okay? It's his primary. He's going to reach out, he's going to hit something, and he's going to slow it down, okay? It doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you combine it with not only this character, but the minions, not only can you slow many characters in a team, especially in a raid, but you can also stun them. And that's via the use of this crowd control ability. Now, there's a few things to notice about this ability. If the target has slow, it is going to apply stun. But the thing that is not talked about enough when it comes to shield security, this kid is an absolute DPS monster. He's going to hit a target for 320% damage. Then he's going to hit it again for another 300% damage. Now, if you've ever been up against a Fury team and something feels like it one-shots you or it nukes you, this is what it was, okay? The rest of the Fury, the Fury team doesn't necessarily hit that hard, but this hits like a boss. And if both of these crit, it is good night to almost everything that you are up against. Now, I am very much tossing up at the moment between Fury's uh, summoning ability for the next T4 that I use, or this guy's level seven. I was actually talking with Casino the other day because I hadn't read this. I just assumed it would be basic. However, not only does his damage go up for 50% on the primary hit, it also goes up for another 50% on the secondary. So if you think he hits hard now, T4 on this guy is going to make him huge. So that's something I'm definitely having a look at. All right, so the shield agent uh, ability. 
15% block chance at base plus a 10% block amount. And for each ally that Nick Fury or Shield Minion, you get an additional 10% block. Now, not only does this mean that he's gonna block most attacks that come on him, negating supreme amounts of damage, limiting the amounts of knock-on effects that you have from uh, characters that are gonna bounce their way through a particular node, but you are also going to have him taunt when one of your allies drops below 50%. And this happens a lot. To be honest, this is why he's my favorite tank, because most of the tanks in this game outside Drax, you have to wait, um, battling through an immense amount of damage coming through before you have the opportunity to actually get a taunt off. With this guy, no, it doesn't really matter who they're picking on. If you get AI decide they're gonna just target one of your guys, they're gonna roll all of their single targets into that particular person, you got nothing to worry about because he's gonna jump in and he's gonna taunt. Probably the only one that really normally nails a target before he's able to taunt in time is when you have a Star-Lord go off because obviously he's gonna call in uh, a huge amount of damage himself. He's gonna call in a Guardian, which let's face it is normally Rocket, and then a third DPS. And that'll all trigger before the Rocket will get to go off. So that's one of the exceptions because you have three called in hits before he's allowed to act, okay? All right, so that is shield security. I'm one piece away. This is one of those real bugger pieces that needs uh, 56 of the ABCs. So that's gonna take me a few days. Now shield assault. This was the very first T4 ability map that I put on a character. And that was for the passive because this just makes the Fury team really hum. So what you basically get is an extra 10% crit chance on top of the base, which is normally 40%. Uh, however, with Nick Fury and Shield Minion allies, they gain an extra 50% crit chance. So what this basically does, what uh, the passive for the assault does, is feeds crit to the rest of the team. Now, when operative crits, she steals turn meter. When you have uh, Shield Medic crit, she's going to uh, steal turn meter. When you have the Trooper crit, there's going to be turn meter gone. When you have Fury crit, there is going to be you stealing a lot of energy, okay? So when you do all of this, and when you have crit going off all the time, it makes this team work more effectively. So while these numbers for the T4 only read 10%, every percentage of crit chance that you have uh, more of a potential going off, the better the chance that you have that you are gonna get this team doing everything that it's supposed to. For the rest of her kit, to be honest, it feels pretty lackluster. If she didn't have that passive, I think I'd probably leave her out on many, many nodes, unless there's an AOE debuff, you know, someone like a Cap throwing up an AOE defense, uh, someone like uh, Luke Cage throwing up an AOE defense, um, I'd probably leave her out. So her grenade is a little bit like the Punisher's grenade, it's gonna fire and hit the primary target, and then the two targets either side. Now it says 25% piercing, but in reality, even if it crits, this is doing pretty mediocre damage, okay? Now, Barrage is pretty great. Um, however, it does take four of the energy. And most of the time, I don't park her next to Fury unless it is a very squishy AoE heavy node. Uh, like, for example, the Thanos raid where we had just that uh, Sea of Gamoras. Then perhaps you would park her next to Fury for the energy feed. So the best part about this ability for the AoE, again, not the heaviest hitting AoE ability in the game. But what it is going to do is remove one positive effect from all targets. Now, this doesn't feel like it removes anywhere near as much as, let's say, Shield Operative's ability to dispel. But, you know, any anytime you're able to remove buffs is great. Unless, however, you want them for yourself. So, for example, if you have an aim character that may have, or let's say, a, a, who else? Crossbones or a Hulk who may have a death proof on them. That's usually an ability you wanna try and steal. Because if you can get on Fury, it means that you have zero chance of being one shot by a character unexpectedly for the rest of the match. And that allows the uh, shield security to really do his job. So I like it a lot. So yeah, she's probably, in my opinion, she feels the least useful, but she's essential. Like she's not negotiable because of that passive. That passive makes this team hum really, really well. Now, Shield Operative, my God. I was, I was farming this character pretty much from the day I started playing in Global Launch, which tomorrow is actually my 200th day playing, uh, which is one of the reasons why I decided to do another video um, because I am 200 days in. And I might show you my roster in another video uh, to basically see what 200 days can do uh, for a dolphin like myself, or elder dolphin, let's say. Not quite whale, but definitely not an average dolphin either. 
Now, her snapshot is awesome. Again, if it's going to crit, you're going to take some speed off the enemy character. But the real winning thing here is you're going to be able to clear a positive effect from that target. And when she does that, she gives it to Fury. Now, 99.99% .99 of the time, this is awesome because she's going to steal that buff. She's going to give it to Fury. And then Fury is going to have the option at some stage to be able to share that buff with everyone on the team. Okay, every one of your standard five characters, as well as any of the minions that you have in the come up. All right, so this is fantastic. It's a great ability, but it has one major downside in raid and arena where basically other characters can target you. This is the only mechanic in the game, whereas if she shoots her basic at someone with a taunt, it has an incredibly high chance to trigger, okay? The amount of focus that this thing has, especially under Fury, seems to hit all the time. So it's great, you take off that taunt, then you can go back to poking what you wanted to. The problem is she gives the taunt to Fury. On the first couple of turns, that's not a big deal because normally the turn order is going to be operative, then medic, then Fury, all right? And the other team's probably not gonna get a turn in that time, so not a big deal. But later in the match, because different characters are gonna get speed up and some won't, you may get slowed while other characters don't, is that you might have a Fury take his turn and then immediately the operative may take a turn after and then give taunt to fury, which means he has a full rotation of turns before he's able to shake off that taunt. The worst case scenario is if this triggers off on a loot cage or a Thanos with a two turn taunt, where you can get an incredibly weird mechanic, which Casino has linked in one of his videos before, that basically shows that you can give taunt to your entire team, which obviously defeats the purpose of a taunt in the first place. So yeah, I mean, being able to steal those buffs, being able to dispel taunts all the time, in all, overall, she's an incredible character just because of that. Extraction is great uh, because you not only stealth a character for two turns, the most injured ally on the map, but also they're going to gain some of their health back immediately and they're going to have a lot of regen. So three for standard characters or you get an additional regen if there is more than that. Now, when she spawns, okay, and then on each of her turns, um, she's going to give counter all right, so she's going to give counter to Fury as soon as the match starts, and the whole shield team is going to start with speed up. All right, so every shield player is probably going to go first, unless on the opposing team you also have Fury shield, or if there is a Loki or a Korath. All right, they're the only characters that go faster than Fury, but operative with a speed up is the fastest character in the game. Okay, so not only is she spawned with speed because of Fury, she also gives counter to Nick Fury on spawn. Now on her turn, she's also going to give counter to two allies on her team that are either Nick Fury or a shield minion, which is awesome, okay? So you're gonna have a lot of counters on a shield team. You're gonna be able to steal buffs to give them to Fury. He's gonna basically share them with everyone. So he's an incredible character. Now Trooper is really, really good. He was the first character that I took up to tier 12, but surprisingly, he's the one that I'm leaving behind at the moment. So you may notice here, that he's only at level 65, while everyone else is at level 66. So I use him most of the time in arena, but I don't use him in raids. And I'll talk a little bit about that when we go through the raid section of this video. So in here, basically his, his basic is going to do 290% damage, which is not too shabby. And then when he crits, he's going to reduce the speed bar on the opposite person, which is awesome, okay? Overwatch does a pretty reasonable amount of damage. All right, here's his special and only has three energy. So again, that's gonna go off a reasonable amount as well. But depending on whether or not you wanna remove some turn meter or whether you wanna do a quick, piece of, uh, quick amount of burst, depends on which one of those you're gonna use. Now, what makes him really fun to use in a Fury team is that when an enemy attacks an adjacent ally, you're gonna shoot that target back for 210% damage. Now, when he crits, he also reduces speed bar. So it means that you're going to be able to reduce the, crit, uh, reduce the speed bar of the opposition as soon as he counters someone. Now, that's not usually as effective as you think, but free damage is always pretty good. But I am debating more and more, basically, whether Troop is worth it most of the time. Because this free damage is great in Blitz. It's also great in Arena. But sometimes that extra sustain from a shield medic is just better. So what I'm going to do is show you, I guess, what I normally use for these teams. All right. So if we have a look at the arena at the moment, uh, what did I finish today? I finished second today. So let's see who's in front of us. I'm hoping it's not a mirror match. 
Okay, so the classic sort of meta tech team that was a big part of, I guess, the meta leading up to Nick Fury, uh, which normally makes pretty soft work for Nick. Now in this squad, um, I use either Trooper or Medic uh, in one of these slots. All right, so it depends on my setup here. So obviously you always wanna run your security at one end because if there's any splash damage that comes off him, you want it to come in through here. Now, the reason you wanna have Trooper positioned immediately next to the security is that security's gonna take most of the hits. If he's gonna get hit, you want your Trooper there to basically shoot back. So you're getting free pokes at the opposition. Now, because Nick Fury can taunt a lot as well, I usually park him here. The reason for that is that if either of these two characters taunt, security or um, your Nick Fury, you want that trooper to be able to take pot shot after pot shot after pot shot uh, on defense. Now, assault goes without saying. She's essential. You cannot run your teams effectively without assault. It'll be significantly worse. And again, I recommend the T4 ability for this character as well. And then operative I like, because if you have an unlucky start to the game, it means that you can recover and buy yourself time with uh, some, uh, what do you call it? Stealth. Now, if she gets stealth on Fury, because it's two turns, it means that you can stealth the entire team. When someone gets hit after that, they drop below 50%, then your security is gonna drop out of stealth, meaning that they have to hit him, taunt or not. So that's a really, really good little combo. So let's have a go at this tech team. Now, my fellow podcaster, uh, Big Roy Awesome, where we do the Strike Force Masters of Launch podcast, he uses a team very similar to this and he believes that it counters Fury. Now, that may be on offense, but when you see how easy it is to pull apart tech teams, uh, you'll see why Fury is just insanely good. Okay, so again, I'm gonna have all of my characters get a turn before anyone on their team. Now, Widow, obviously we don't want her getting her speed up. So I'm hoping that this primary ability on the operative is going to crit. So we shoot her first. And you can see here, we dropped her speed right down and we got a speed down because of the assist of our security. So because we bought ourselves a little bit of time, I'm gonna try and get some buffs up on Fury. So I'm gonna summon the two minions. As you can see, he's now gained two offense up as a result of that. Now here, I'm not too much worried about her turn meter now because we have speed up above the Black Widow. So I'm going to use the Trooper's special ability to try and whack some damage. Okay, so a nice little crit and the assist, so she's down. So this is what I mean about Fury's T4 uh, passive ability. It's incredible, okay? Now here, Rocket or Star-Lord, you can pretty much hit either of them. Now there's all these defense ups floating around. So I'm gonna try and use the ability of the assault to try and hit everyone. So if I use this, hopefully we get an assist after all is said and done as well. Not in this case, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put down a slow, because of the defense up, I don't wanna waste my nuke on the uh, shield security, okay? So now that we've dropped below, so that's the combo I was talking about before with Star-Lord. Okay. All right, so what we want to do is get a heal because our assault's been a bit damaged. Now, we did lose, unfortunately, because of vision. We lost our offense up, so that's not fantastic. I'm just going to be a little bit preventative here, and I'm going to put a heal on the assault because there's counters up on the crossbones. We're going to fire, trying to take some turn meter off there, which we got. We're going to fire again to use up that second counter. And then we're going to basically slow him down again just to make sure that he doesn't go off. Okay, now the Fury team has a really high resistance because of some of the passives. And because we had that defense up on most of our squad, that rocket was not able to do much. Because we had all those counters, the rocket almost effectively killed itself. And that's why AOE characters against a Fury team, never a great idea. They are going to pull you apart. Now, normally when they have a counter up, an ability won't chain. However, if you kill it with Fury, he will still bounce onto the second character. And you can see that that crit fed energy onto our shield uh, trooper. So let's just keep bringing that speed meter down on the crossbones because we don't want him to go off. We don't really have much big abilities on the other two. Now to buy ourselves some time here so I can jump onto the other two characters, I'm gonna stun out the crossbones. I'm gonna shift because it's operative's turn and take that offense down away from the Star-Lord. So then when he goes on this turn, he's not gonna do anywhere near as much damage on this chain turn. Okay, and again, because of our positioning of the trooper, we were able to get that away nice and clean. 
Crossbones is still stunned, so we can shift across to the vision. We'll finish off the vision. And then we'll take apart the crossbones. Okay, so that's a very conservative way to play it. You can certainly go much more aggressive and not worry about the CC type mechanics and just nuke everything down. So with those fights, that's probably as bad as it goes as far as your health. But if they do get a Star-Lord going off early and you haven't got an offense down, then he can do a little bit of damage. So in a fight like that for tech teams, if I'm worried about their burst, let's say there was a Gamora or someone in there that they could have called in for even more burst on the opening round, Sometimes I'll run Medic because Medic's going to be able to do the offense down instead of um, the, who do I swap out there? The Trooper, okay? But you saw how much damage the Trooper was able to do by himself. So why don't we jump into Strike Raid Alpha? I'm going to have to buy energy. What is this? Okay. So I'm in Strike Team 1 and I'm in uh, the Sigma Alpha. So this is our new guild. We merged from our Sigma Kraken Hunters into this one this week. All right, so what do we got here? So this is the B10 mission mode. So you can already see that the Fury team tends to hang out pretty well. So I'm sitting just above 6 million at the moment because most of the global lane, the guys leave to me because they know they don't need to worry too much about it. All right, we'll spend this energy. God, this is what happens when you become a content creator, man. You're not becoming broke from trying to show on videos. All right, so I must've had some bad luck on the last run. So let's get that operative back up. It doesn't matter how well you play your Fury team. Every now and again, you can just have RNG go the wrong way. So in this squad, I've shifted a little bit recently. I talk to a lot of people. I tried a different combination for myself as well. Sometimes I run Fury in the middle with two healers if I'm really nervous about uh, having some big burst damage and I want to hide someone away frequently with my operative. But this does seem to work more effectively with sustain. So parking Fury on the outside edge and then having your medic get the bulk of the energy. Now, because he is on the edge, it means only these two characters, Fury and Medic, are going to get any energy. So that way you're gonna have more going into limited characters. So you're gonna be able to get your abilities off more frequently. Assault in the middle. Why Assault in the middle? If Operative uh, gets hit early, she's gonna stealth herself, which means chains are not going to bounce any further off of the shield security. You gotta love these timers when you're doing videos, right? See, professional people would edit that out, but not this guy. All right, so the assault is also pretty squishy. So I find that operative feels like she can take a little bit more of a hit compared to assault. A couple of times I've messed up, I've positioned the assault next to the security and I've very much paid the price. So let's have a look at this node. I haven't even looked at who we've got. So we'll assess it once we get in. I'd love to slow this down more when we talk about it, um, but obviously you've only got five minutes and the alpha ray are, are pretty heavy. All right, so Korath is going to go before my Nick Fury because of the speed up, and we've got two of them. So what we're going to do first is steal the taunt from Drax. And if you have a look, this is the mechanic I was talking about. Now, this is why I hate this mechanic. See how that means that the Korath had to hit Nick Fury? And it means if I don't do something about this Korath, he's also going to hit Fury. And with a heal down, that sucks. It's so exposed. I do not understand why we have Nick Fury taunting. It's, it's such a weird thing. So I'm going to hide him away once I get to the operatives next turn. So we need to deal with these Korath. This one has offense down. No need to worry about him. So let's shift back to the other one. All right, we only got one crit. That energy, got, sorry, we got two crits. So that went back over to the operative. Now, none of these guys do AOE buffs. So it's fine just to use our AOE. And then we get the assist from the medic. Now that's beautiful because now we have offense down on both of the Korath. So I can play around with some other targets. Let's slow down this Thor if we can. And then we might try and manipulate the turn meter on the other one. So I've just lied to you. Okay. So unfortunately I forgot about the oracles giving regen up. So now we're going to try and take these off these characters. So let's get rid of this Korath's one heal. The assist finishes off that Korath. T4 ability on the passive for Fury, I'm telling you, it is amazing. All right, this Thor is gonna go off, so we're gonna offense down on him. That was two turns, so I don't need to worry about offense downing again before he gets his ultimate. Now that heal block on Fury, again, very frustrating. We don't have any good buffs on Fury, so what we're gonna do is bring in some minions to hopefully hide him away with some stealth. All right, start protecting him. Okay, now we do have a slow on the Thor, so we're going to use our special ability to try and... Well, we didn't have to stun him because we just murdered his face. That's the burst I'm talking about with security. It is incredible. 
Okay, so we stole the counter off Drax, even though he used it, which is always awesome. All right, now we've got no choice but to hit Drax here. No point using the AoE heal. We're going to steal another buff from Drax. So the summon minions for the operative, they also steal those buffs, which is a really cool mechanic. Now we're going to share all of these buffs on Fury. So check this out. Watch this whole team. We're going to get counter. We're going to get two turns of offense. We've got defense up. We've got speed. We've got two sets of regen, okay? If you save when you use that, you can then start steamrolling on the opposite team. If one of these guys had an AoE, I may even let the Thor go off just to let him murder himself. I might even leave that Boomer over there to go off just to show you what happens when they counter. Okay, let's get rid of that Korath. Let's offense down this cable. And like I said, what I'll do is I'll leave Thor to hit. Okay. So bye-bye cable. Let's start taking out that Oracle now. Okay, we're going to get an offense down on that cable as soon as possible. Ugh, on that turn, how do you like that? All right, so bang, counter, bang, counter, bang, counter. Okay. So not only do we give him offense down, bit of a waste. I probably should have uh, managed the Thor better knowing that that boomer was going to go before him. So why don't we slow down this other boomer since we don't have any counters up. We'll get the offense down on him. Now let's just try and finish off the Oracle while we use that AOE. No assist. That's okay. It's only supposed to be 30% of the time. So you can't expect it every time. Okay. Okay. So it's around this time of the fight that I start considering cooldowns. So what I might do next time around, because we're going to go into the new fight soon, I want to get a heal off on my medic so everyone is fresh for the next node. All right, no point using anything there. Because he's going to chain, we're going to hit the Thor instead of the cable, even though the cables I want more dead. I think this is going to have enough juice to kill the Thor on the AoE. And it does. All right, we'll use that bit of overkill. We'll get that heal off so they're nice and fresh and then we'll kill the cable. So they're an unbelievably effective unit. The sustain is ridiculous. The damage is absolutely mental. The minions provide so much more bonus. The stealing of the taunts, the stealing of the bus, the offense downs. They're just the greatest team in the game right now. If you haven't got Nick Fury, if you think you're going to be able to get him for the next time he rolls around, start farming your Kree now. Now, unfortunately, I showed you the bug before, so you've already seen some gameplay from Dark Dimension, but I think a six-star Fury is really going to play very, very well in there. So, uh, look, if you like this content, please let me know below if you like videos like this. I'm very new. I hadn't planned on doing videos, um, but a few people asked me today. I would love it if you would come and listen to us on the Strike Force Masters of Launch podcast, which is done by myself and Big Roy Awesome, who also does videos here on YouTube. We release every Monday. Now, this week, we have a guest host stopping by. We're available on iTunes, Podbean, you name it. If you want to join us on our Discord, search for Strike Force Masters of Launch, or you can search directly for me, Chewburger84, because we always love to talk with the community. Until then, if there's anything else I can help you with, come find me. Let's have a chat. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys later. See ya.